and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and thank you all for coming. I'm up here. We're just an August few tonight, with uh, several out of town. First thing would be the minutes, uh, those of us who have received the minutes, and we're not here to move those. So, mm -hmm. I'll move. second. <laughs> second, Nancy. Move and second. Any, yeah. any changes we'll or care. corrections? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Gary. Well, right to you, sir. All right. Randy's up. Paving is done. Um, Gilman Town is done. Seating, shoulders put on, so on and so forth. That being said, now we are putting together the first snowplow truck for the winter, which everybody loves to hear about. <laughs> um, the, the storm that we, if you want to call it that, the Elm Lake storm. <laughs> no, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Micro burst. Uh, not one. We had one tree down on Hanley Road and two at the tennis courts, which did not damage the courts. <laughs> so we bring all those up today and offer assistance to the village, but the county had it under control. That's what I was informed. Yeah. So, good, to, good to hear. Okay. Yeah, a lot of friends and neighbors pitching in. Yep. Tomorrow we are starting on the snowmobile trails and taking out the docks of the path and down the pathways and doing a little assessment of the pathways with this storm. I have no idea if you're taking down it. What about uh, any returns on the snowmobile trails at that end? Uh, the one going up oh, the mountain, mountain has mountain. several and many trees in it. Yep. Um, the drag will, I assume, take care of it. Have a work day or two? Yeah. yeah. Um, the John Foley, I was in touch with him. He is, as soon as it quits raining, going to you know, level out the topsoil and we'll do some edging, as he called it. But he's not going to plant anything this year, obviously. So it'll be moving forward next spring. spring. Don't interrupt you. Sorry. The flag that flew away is, yes. is here. It is. Uh, Roxanne said somebody found it somewhere and they brought it. It's in the okay, we, gazebo. Okay, we saw the new flag today. Yeah. Because we lost, now found. Yep. Our one flag. of the big ones? Yeah, 588. Yeah. It's, it's a big one. Yeah. It came off the pole and was. So somebody found it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a lake storm. It was scary when. We'll call it that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Wow. We that. Oh. Well, it is a mid-month meeting, so <laughs> I do have a question. Question okay. from Doc. Are the, uh, speaking of plowing, are the stay routes still the same, or are they changing? They are definitely changing. Um, I haven't had my meeting, which is in two weeks, but, so I will tell you what the town roads are going to change. We are doing the village down to the leaving the shop, going down to the four corners, turning, going down to the first parking lot, turning, going north to okay. Old Indian Lake Road, past yeah. Bass Mountain, where we always turn around to double the hill, okay. come down to the four corners, no longer doubling the hill, and then we're going to turn west, go back to the shop, and then we're going to do the county beat. All the way up to pass through 10 up to the state barn, and then back to our shop. The county is now going to go from there at this state DOT barn and go west to the state beat. The state is going to have one truck going out the Weaver Town Road, one truck coming north to. Somewhere up around Jessup River Bridge, I do believe, this is what the information I don't know yet. The northern beat is going to come down and meet them wherever they turn around. So the, so the state parts have not been confirmed. I have but yours, I haven't been privy to that information until right. my meeting in the next Tuesday. Right, but, the, but Don's answer really is that the 
for both county, which is a contractor, and, and Lake Pleasant, which is a contractor, they have changed. Mm -hmm. Reimbursement the same, and if anything, maybe a mile or mile and a half. Red and money is exactly the same. Great. So, um, far as the town goes. I mean, it looks, in talking with Randy, it looks like it's more advantageous for us, and um, hopefully the state's, the state's trying to get their shortage of manpower covered and double up on the places where it's the snow really has been gotten, getting bad. So you will have two trucks going through the village to the top of the hill on different routes. You're going to see, sadly, green salt and white salt applied to the village. So... The green stuff being the a stronger... Uh, green stuff meaning it's treated. Yeah. It's, supposed, it's the slimy stuff. It's supposed to stick to the roads better. Yeah. It works better in the cold, cold, cold. It sticks to your car better. Too. But it also sticks to your car better. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. That is the newest updates and it's 100% due to Lack of manpower in the state sense. That's why you see the sign. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. that's, that's, one. that's a pretty good tip off. Yeah, that one. No. <laughs> um, but more to follow on that. Yeah, we get closer. When when you said two trucks, is that because we'll have the? We're going to have the state road, state DOT coming up from Wells. They're going to go north of Speculator from Wells. Okay, gotcha. And we're going to do the hill also, mm -hmm. so, and down through the village. So, but periodically, we're going to have a little extra care. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll have some of the green stuff going west. No. And no, you're different. No, they just we still run white salt. Oh, okay. And so does the county. It's just the state truck that gone to all green. You still have a post box, a mailbox? No. Right no, no, no. There's a good chance you might save it. <laughs> no, someone else. Uh, <laughs> yeah, had taken it out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Uh, old business uh, with Chris under the weather and not here. Uh, we will postpone the museum fundraiser talk unless there's anything that you have um, as far as changes. Checks in are coming in. Checks are coming in. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. She asked me to change the Facebook picture mm -hmm. to include the town's. P.O. box and all, which he, which wasn't included the first time. Good. And I did that. Yeah, so. A little easier for folks to make those donations. Right. Hopefully that'll help too. Uh, the Airbnb <clears throat> County discussion, we've been asking Betsy to represent this uh, issue to the county, and she has and continue to. She gave me a, a pretty good uh, briefing on this. Uh, they have brought it up. Uh, the county is really just willing to facilitate what local towns would like to do in the way of these uh, they're called STRs so that you don't we don't keep throwing Airbnb into the barrel uh, short-term rentals uh, that said um, Inlet has been going at it pretty seriously uh, Indian Lake uh, somewhat as well um, other towns have have put it off uh, for now um, looking to get more of a groundswell of uh, interest from their taxpayers. Uh, I did uh, read and, and printed out a copy of a, uh, a piece from NPR that's in the Adirondack, uh, what are they called? Oh, the no, the, the, uh, the, National the book. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what they call that thing. Uh, Daily sure. Enterprise, the, mm. the Adirondack Daily Enterprise. Uh, and it's, it has to do with Saranac Lake. So it's out of county, but naturally all the same concerns on both sides of this issue. Um, so we'll continue to both work uh, at county and look to, uh, come January, look to form a, uh, a little task force of folks, both uh, uh, elected from the village and elected from this board, um, and also some interested town people from I would hope both sides of this equation, realtors, um, those who rent these things out of their uh, uh, vacation homes or their own homes, however, um, and attack this and get it uh, objectively looked at. And that's pretty much where we are now. Meal site update. Um, Pauline met with, uh, with Betsy and things go well at the senior center meal site. Um, Ten individuals are the norm. 
there for uh, lunch to be served. Another a dozen or so are delivered uh, daily. Um, and it's, uh, let's say, it, it, the, the program is still funded um, and so far going fairly well. Um, any questions on either of those two? If not, we'll move to the budget report, which uh, says Neil, but I'm going to hand this to Nancy first for just a second. Um, the board just received, uh, here, just received the updated, what we call the preliminary budget. So the board and the community has had very little time to look right. at it. I have copies mm -hmm. in the office if anybody wants them. Copies in the office. Uh, Budget committee um, has been meeting um, several times to hammer this down to a a fair number for us to um, to put uh, forward for the 22 budget. Currently, we're at 2.32 percent increase, which really doesn't reflect uh, several things that have not become completely clear mm -hmm. to us in regards to health insurance and um, you know some. Items up in the air. Mm -hmm. you, you want to add to that? No. <laughs> no you covered it, it pretty just, well. well. Suffice <laughs> to say, we will uh, get it um, inside the two percent threshold, and anything we can do right. to make that even better, we certainly uh, will give it to college. Try to do so. Mm -hmm. We are also cognizant of the fact that um, you know raises and, and so on are applicable here for several of the people on staff. Um, We've had, we get some increases on one end, say on the health insurance, and some decreases on others like uh, state pension this year, mm -hmm. which um, comes in pretty handy when you can find the, the yin and the yang of these sort of things, uh, crafting a budget. Mm -hmm. But as Debbie said, we'll have uh, copies of the preliminary, and then that will work for the next well, to four the, weeks. To yeah. the first of, um, we goes public. Our public hearing is the first of November. Public hearing is the first, and, and then adoption is the 15th 15. of yeah. uh, November. Yep. Yeah. Both meeting nights, as it turns out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. was lucky. Yeah. I don't know why, but it seems to fall more than every few years. Um, any questions about the budget or <laughs> things you'd like to add to it? Or even better, subtract from it? <laughs> Uh, but as I say, we were in the very beginning processes and uh, everyone has been very cooperative for Nancy and myself and, and of course Betsy. Uh, new business. The insurance committee has met. Mm -hmm. Debbie? Um, we had a meeting with uh, two different companies, two different agents. Um, right now we are working with Upstate New York, is who we have our health insurance through. We also um, interviewed with CDL Insurance and the the committee has decided we are switching over to CDL Insurance as our agency. Um, right now, we're um, in the process of approving the workers insurance, which will be staying with MVP at this point in time. I uh, still don't have any figures on what's going on with the retirees insurance yet. They seem to have their percentages coming in a little bit later than um, the workers insurance. So I have a, I need a resolution to say that we will be no longer working with upstate agency effective um, as of this summer 31st, and that we'll be coming on board with CDL Insurance. Brian Moult will be our agent. Uh, so moved. Thank you. Second. Oh, okay. Um, comment, question, concerns? Um, Committee did a pretty good job. I think, it will, yeah, and the only thing that's going to be like a little bit challenging, but I have a meeting with Brian next week about this, is the high deductible. Um, of course, we're going to have to leave the account that we have open with um, with Upstate New York, and we'll be going with, uh, it's called pay something. Um, so we'll be switching, drawing those monies out that haven't been used, um, which we always keep a budget of around $40,000 to go into that. So that's just going to be a little bit different, but otherwise, I think um, I think the switchover is going to be good for so the next... a new credit card for the... Just a new credit card, yeah, but it looks like your MVP insurance will be the same at this point in time so and i feel comfortable um whoever's going to take over the um health insurance um work will be working with brian directly and brian really knows us pretty well so i, I feel confident brian molt has been uh our, our broker our our hands-on person helping debbie and all of us for a number of years mm -hmm. uh also done a lot of other places in the area mm -hmm. uh local fellow 
um, and he's got all the products that we do need, and they answer that phone. Yep. They, they get back to you, they help. He's scared not to. Well, I, I assumed. <laughs> uh, just, I, you may want to pass that along to him, our new perspective. Oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> that I could. Okay, so it was almost saying. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, we'll close that, that uh, vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, three ayes. So we, we move to the other uh, area. Chamber third quarter report um, was given to the board. It is a, not necessarily a formality. It's quite a three-page summary of what the chamber has been doing for the contractual work that they perform for the town and the area. And it's, it's, it's a nice piece. A uh, letter from Peter Welch, the president of the chamber, and then the rest of the stuff coming from Donna and Bonnie as well. Um, and they do a lot. Um, Got to read it all to know mm -hmm. how much, but um, sorry that the Bear Festival couldn't mm. happen, but it looks good for next year, right? So, Hopefully. Yeah, well. The world's got to get back on its axis. And there's, there's one more thing in new business that uh, didn't make the, uh, the agenda, which is um, we, uh, we reported briefly at the last meeting, news to all of us, that our zoning enforcement officer, um, Bob Bankovich, would be retiring at the first of the year. That job is currently being advertised, right? Not, not one phone call. Nothing. Uh, already out, the uh, the parameters were, were were also in the town hall for mm -hmm. anyone who wants to stop. Uh, being advertised, uh, it's a good job, but it's a better job if the same person also approaches the village and hopefully is uh, hired at both ends. Uh, we are currently speaking with the village about options that we can we can do that would uh, make that more seamless um, it's not exactly the same job there are a few minor things that are different but for the most part bob is trained and works for both of uh, the municipalities he's officed at the town and files and uh, hardware and all that stuff are are there the software has been bought separately from uh, village and town to make this transition, I don't know if he foreshadowed this by talking us into getting this stuff. Um, well, he did say that it would yeah, make in the, the transition mm -hmm. sure. easier when he was going to retire. Right. Uh, but uh, the town is prepared to do whatever makes the village most comfortable in this situation. Betsy has sent a letter uh, to uh, Jeanette, to the mayor. Uh, giving the two options that are, are would work. One is working with them the same way as we always have. Another is perhaps creating, uh, not to get too deep in the weeds of the budget, but when you have a town budget that has a village, we have, a, we have two separate, we have a TOV part of the budget that's town outside the village, and then a, a part that includes all of us was village residents, of course, well, town residents as well. Bob's pay is paid out of that TOV portion of our, our budget currently, but we could always create the job, move these things, shift it, and make one person, one position to take care of all needs on both sides. Uh, it would require, of course, the village to uh, agree, and, and hopefully, if not, then at least sit in and hire uh, whomever we find to do the same work for them. So the ball's in their court as far as uh, that goes now. Um, I can see it being fairly seamless. The town does a few more permits per year, uh, maybe 20-30% uh, more, but the permits in the village of course are more extensive. Uh, larger projects, naturally the bigger commercial <coughs> entities are in the village. So a lot of time is spent in Camp of the Woods, uh, Charlie John's, and just bigger, um, uh, bigger projects. Uh, I see it as a win-win. Uh, a 
We'll see. That's for the mayor and the supervisor to have her out uh, when she's back in town. And um, <laughs> I guess we have to have some applicants too. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. going to be the. I know. I was yeah. really kind of surprised. But, uh, Where are we advertising through? As we always do. We have a block in the leader at uh, the Hamilton Express. Nancy's going to put it on Facebook, and I thought Christine was okay. going to put it on the um, website. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, we should put it on the website. Sure, mm -hmm. I think, but, we, but it's social media. We didn't do it last time. All we did was a block ad, and we got like five or six people. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of mm -hmm. this year is different. Right? Yeah, it's, it is. Um, and on these sort of things, where you know, you know have to have the unique persons mm -hmm. who apply for these things, they have to have a. Uh, a fair amount of maturity and uh, maybe some past experience in the broader field of yeah. uh, land use or zoning or construction or something along those lines. Um, but it, it really does work well when both of these jobs are coalesced mm -hmm. as far as jobs, uh, pay scales and benefits and so on. So um, here's hoping. Yeah. I think that there's a possibility that uh, uh, we can work with the village closely, <laughs> most importantly. We have to find some folks who are mm -hmm. good candidates. Mm -hmm. so more to follow on that. Committee reports. Anything from youth? Uh, I did speak to Sammy about the Oak Mountain, the ski program, and she mm -hmm. did increase her part of the budget by about $1,000 because she knew the increase was coming. We don't have an idea necessarily of the number of kids that are taking lessons, and I'm sure Oak doesn't know that until they actually sign up or show up or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> there's funds left in the uh, youth rec budget, the rest of it, mm -hmm. you know, for the season. And we usually do ski lessons for our uh, local kids for Christmas vacation. Which and, will come out of this year's budget. Right, right. And uh, we're hoping that we can just move some of the leftover money from the summer program and all. Cause, sure. Because we're pretty close to what we had budgeted for ski lessons you know, so far this year. So I, I think we could wiggle that in too so that the kids can have a little bit of activity yeah. over sure. Christmas break. It's one of the, one of the most, uh, uh, I think, well attended is during that period when mm -hmm. kids are here and uh, out of school and it's all new. Right, and, right. Yeah, the only thing that's changed is uh, $2.00. A lesson increase. I think it was. That, yeah. Laura, yeah. Yeah, and I think the advanced lessons went up, but that's I think it was twenty five dollars, but for the whole season. Yeah. It wasn't uh, like per. Right. 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 We, we we took a pretty broad look at it with the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, I would think, the most popular of all the things. I mean, summer ones go up yeah. and down for its use and crafts and whatnot. Um, we didn't have as much luck last year getting another um, aid, but that could change too. Mm -hmm. You can get more ambitious from both trips and on what you do in town the, in the village parks if you have aids. So. And I think it's important that it's advertised very early in the year oh boy, when college, college sure. kids are home yep. because they set up their summer work mm -hmm. usually. Would you say near the end of ski season, like March? We did, we did, yeah. yeah, we did this. We did really early. I think we did around March or April this year. Mm -hmm. we, before it was way later, and the oh, kids yeah. have already got their established their job. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So I'm sure the next time yeah. we'll get that yeah. on board. And that's it. Me. Okay. We, we already talked about the insurance mm -hmm. committee, um, budget committees in the full throes of their things. Uh, I don't have anything else on committees done. You're good. Good. All right. Uh, would someone care to pay the bills? I'm a... I'll second. All right. Um, because we've already signed them all, mm -hmm. I believe that would be mm -hmm. cause for passing it. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Let's pay the bills. Mid month bills are always so nice and easy. Mm. <laughs> Public comment. Any and all. Question. Yeah. 
Green salt versus white salt. Okay, I get I get the slime thing. I'm more concerned about the effect on the lake between the two. Supposedly, this is all big word. It's a big word in there. The when they mix it, and they mix what? The salt with the chemicals to make slime brine, mm -hmm. and apply it to the salt with the applicators. The salt sticks to the road. Directly, that's why you see the trucks out earlier before a storm. So it's the, then it doesn't blow off and go into the streams. But now the salt is already wet, so it's already dissolving. So it doesn't take as long for that to activate and melt. No, it's not nice. Yeah. So the green people of the world love. The mixed green salt, the brine. Yeah. Hmm. They say it's the greatest thing since Swiss cheese. When I was at Paul Smith's with the salt um, reduction and recovery committee for the four counties, they had a speaker from Colorado come where they do liquid, you know, big tankers like your Eldridge truck, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and it's still. You know, any way you cut it, no matter what you call it, and no matter what composition it's in, there is runoff, uh, plain and simple. So streams, um, culverts, et cetera, et cetera. Bridges. Well, oh, sure. But uh, for those who are at those meetings, and it's a huge assembly of, of interest groups, right? So the more green folks, the folks that are there from well, like our LPSA or some bigger groups, are about the end result, where's it end? In those moving streams, in our lakes, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have others who are homeowners who are more about my truck, my car, my well, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so it, everyone's heard, which is why there's many of them and they go on for many hours, but um, no one disagrees that we, well, I shouldn't even say that. There's still people that come with the, why can't we go 40? Why can't we drive on snowpack? on Route 3 and Route 30 and Route 8. And they're listened to it for a few minutes and then the cat calls start, you know, it's because it's, it's Disneyland, it's not gonna happen. The state feels very responsible about safe travel across their state roads. And that stuff is probably past us. Karen. Yeah, what happened to the initiative that I think was mentioned uh, a few years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, about cutting back the roadsides with the trees allowing more sunlight to that was my uh, that was my pet thing i had been minimize, been turned into cutting the canopy back yeah. right for more radiant clearing well it seems to have gotten stuck that was always tracy's thing right well it's go ahead just to chime in on this there are two studies being done right now if you go to indian lake on the left hand side you will see it looks like apparently somebody clear cut their lot to look at the lake right probably in Seville mm -hmm. yeah. and it is not that it was the state of New York that is their test zone uh -huh. they have two of those test zones that they are literally clear cutting the sides of the roads to prove to the higher ups awful. in Utica <laughs> that this worked it was a monitored cold area because the sunlight never hit it and such and now that they clear cut it last fall they have so far one year's worth of numbers for them and now that this obviously coming randy's aware of this i just assume mm -hmm. some of the folks might be too but the state unlike our guys that are you know pressed to just get get it done and keep it clear the state requires the snow uh plowman to shoot and keep very accurate log records of every one of their passes to shoot the pavement for temperatures off of it and you know gets i guess that all that data gets pushed into one pile and then figure out where are the places, why, why does it pile up here and then not right there and so on and so on. So they, they're trying to do just this and you probably have seen across the Adirondacks, closest ones in Paseco, the salt, uh, diminished salt areas. As soon as you get out to Paseco, there's a 15 mile stretch where they're putting supposedly less salt down on those roads to see how they, you know, what's the efficacy of that over a period of time 
on their roads. They're not going to be able to tell you about your pickups, but they will be able to see if the road gets deteriorated quicker or not and so on. So they are looking at and responding to a lot of this stuff. In the meantime, um, we used to have the same thing about, well, why don't they uh, stop putting, uh, why are they putting so much salt? Frank and I used to go around and around and, well, they're trying to cut down on sand. Well, why? Well, put a little more sand down. It turns out sand is actually worse in culverts and, and the environs around as it builds up because they all just gets brushed into the culverts, then is the salt that supposedly, uh, you know, diminishes slower and better. Mm -hmm. So all of this has been put in the hopper. I would love to see that on stretches of Route 8 across uh, over to the Weavertown stretch, where you literally drive in a tunnel of trees on many of those stretches. So naturally, if there's going to be black ice or there's going to be any sort of goblins that pop up, it probably is there. Mm -hmm. And sun may just keep a few more thank you moms from developing and a whole bunch of other things, but seems to go a lot slower than if you or I were running. Right. So do you think it's just data shows that this is beneficial that Tom would ever consider doing that on town roads? I don't know. I mean, thinking forward? To open up the canopy, I have been trying to do that on every oh. road that we do. If you mm -hmm. go down on Tamarack Road and some of the other ones that we do, maybe we are taking our right way and going straight to the sky. A lot of that is really in anticipation of the power problems, right? I mean, right. Page Street, not too long ago, your road very recently. Um, and then other highway superintendents just hope for a uh, microbird. No, no, that's, yeah. no, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, that seems too convenient. Yes, yeah. right. But, but when, when they're laying over the road, they're almost always laying on one side or the other, also over your power lines. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have Asplon, there's a whole bunch of uh, stakeholders here that would like to see those side roads cleaned up that same way. Yeah. Randy, Difference is that, I'm sorry. No, no, oh, go for oh, it. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, if the state wants to use the green stuff, why aren't they telling our guys that or the town guys that they have to use the green stuff on their roads first of all, ready to i believe it will come mm -hmm. second of all it is i believe nine times as expensive they're still in the, this is still testing you have everything's to make tested. it you have to buy the machine to make it to oh. blend it you have to have all the applicators on the trucks to applicate it and put it down and monitor it plus it's un Fathomably more expensive. Mm -hmm. So does the Dickie John have to be changed out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, so it's officially went to uh, Debbie has worked Dickie John into the meeting. <laughs> Had to. Well, which one is supposedly better? But you never. So which one's better for the environment? Yeah. For the environment. Um, I don't think they say that yet. I'm, I'm not going to. Which the salt is salt, but which yeah. one has less of a negative the, impact on the water? It depends on what the temperature in which it's being applicated. So Eventually, it's all going to wash in, correct. whether it's white or green. Which one would Going this? back to what I said, the green slime works best from 20 below to about 15 degrees. From 15 degrees up, the white salt works tremendously better. The green salt slime, this sits there and it's like a cornmeal mash that doesn't do anything. Hopefully, it doesn't make it slippery. So they have to keep putting it down. Yeah. So now they're starting. Kept, to, just the application rates go on. Keep in mind, there's, there's, there's no there's no definitive answers being given him. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he can give to you. Right. So we're still in the test area. Both of them get put down. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows, or nobody has told you which one, whether it's the slime or the plain rock fall. They're being put in different places. That. No. I, I can't answer that. You question. can't answer the question. But but the places where we will be doing exclusively, we know how that works. They're going to be putting it in other places, some of which we don't pass over. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they'll be monitoring to see how that that goes. The states that have been doing this for twenty years and still have data collection going on. So okay. the short answer is nobody knows. Yeah. Not yet. A woman's logic here. Oh boy. Okay. If the green stuff doesn't work when it's warmer, then do they put the regular stuff 
they because just keep piling now, on the green. Now their barn is full of green. They're not outfitted for it. So mm -hmm. they don't have like they don't, this pile they don't for have this town. White salt. Okay, so like I said, the woman's logic here. <laughs> well, but again, that would mean double the amount of tandems. You, you, yeah, you need different trucks. Right, dip, oh, different, okay. double amount of tandems, shed, different, different places to store it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or divide the sheds in half. And it's, it's, there's a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a complicated issue. Well, but, but, and, then, and, and this regular the salt, the regular salt mm -hmm. has done that, and we know that. Mm -hmm. um, so the shorter answer is that, that they're hoping more of it will stay where it's supposed to be and not be so easily bounced. You ever see the salt that comes out of our oh, truck, yeah. bounces and ends up, and then one car goes by at 60 or 70 and flies off because the road's right. drying up. Yeah. So, so there's a lot to be had here. You'll, see, you'll see the terminology in any of these studies, pre-salting. Yeah. You can't pre-salt with white salt because it doesn't no. stay on the road. Right. Now, from Indian Lake, south towards Gore Mountain, they are pre-salting with, like you said, in Colorado with tankers yeah. and spraying calcium chloride onto the road. Mm -hmm. Same stuff you guys use on dirt roads. Yeah. Which is pretty much not great stuff. So we are drinking. I think the county has in the past pre-salted Route 8. Because well. our comment is, what are they doing? Practicing? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> yes. Um, they're running salt before it does anything. Yeah, the dry salt before it seems seems a waste. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five, We've you know, witnessed it. <laughs> half an hour before, you might get away with it if you've got mm -hmm. a lot of traffic. But if you're pre salting the whole trip. Off. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You've seen say, it, I'm uh, sure. This is, this is uh, we, because we're contractors with the state. The superintendents association gets to weigh in. The towns, as contractors, don't really. Mm -hmm. They tell you what you're going to apply right. on the on the, the state and how often. This scenario, they are also telling us we're going to change your route. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. no, don't get me wrong. They came to us in a very nice way of doing yep. it. But yep. They did it. Well, most importantly, uh, it looks like we'll have good coverage on the places that have been Correct. bad spots for us and in the past. In theory, the town's going to have a lot easier. Hopefully. We yeah. won't say that too loudly because we want to yeah. keep our same reimbursement. Yeah. No, thank you. This is very informative. <laughs> Just on a side note, are they still working on the custom plows to plow the roads? Oh, I, yeah. I think last year they were digging the roads up. Yes, so the state has also bought some lovely, extremely expensive plows that now have um, basically greater blades right behind the regular sold-out blade that are controlled with air cylinders in the cab. They can put how much pressure down on it. Mm -hmm. And you see all this lovely coal patch that they put in, the little stripes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those things, when they go down through, they're inch-wide little blades all the way across that 11-foot. <laughs> no, no, you're not. I just uh, we are we're in areas of stuff that that uh, goes over many of our heads. So. Okay. Well, needless to say, they bought a whole lot of expensive plows, and all it does is rip the roads. Yeah. A lot of patching for first year. Yeah. Yeah. It's called job security. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other co public comment. Hearing none, round table, Debbie. No, thanks. Nothing. Nancy. Mm, nothing for me. No. All right. I do have a few things. I'm sure you Be a Betsy. <laughs> Be a Betsy. Uh, one which is very important and topical and started today. Randy, you're probably aware of this, I assume. Uh, but the, the transfer station, Lake Pleasant transfer station mm -hmm. scales are being replaced. Um, out there, which has, uh, I guess, about two weeks where, where we're not going to be able to weigh both uh, homeowners and contractors' goods. Uh, this is a letter from Tracy Eldridge uh, asking all encouraged, strongly encouraged residents to use curbside pickup during this time as traffic patterns at the station will be altered and restricted at times. Um, so the, the contractors have been made aware of this. It started today. October, Monday, mm -hmm. October 18th, and should go 
I would assume, into the first week of November. I have a question, if I may. Please. How's that going to affect cleanup day on mm. Wednesday? We're going to get guesstimated. Okay. We're going to guesstimate anybody or everybody that goes everybody in. Everybody that goes yeah. in there is getting guesstimated. It's all going to be guesstimated. Right, which, which is why. They're saying, you know, if you can wait until the scales are back up, if not, if it's just garbage. A lot of folks around here bring their garbage. Mm -hmm. And other, uh, I do recites, but um, put it out for the curbside pickup for this brief period of time. Um, I can assure you, back when I was on the county board, the uh, county did the Indian Lake transfer station scales, and it was a terrific job uh, when it was done. But naturally, some inconvenience during the period of time. So, kind of important to let people know that if they go out there, they could be delayed, maybe even turned away. Um, one other, which is uh, also from Betsy, some funding things from ANCA, um, but the Community Development Block Grant, um, which is things for um, competitions for communities and eligible citizens uh, for monies is almost up. October 29th is the last day for applications to be submitted electronically. Um, and this is... Uh, they're big, they're big items, uh, 500000 and a million. We're not involved, but uh, we're always asked to pass that stuff along. And then if anyone wants to peruse ANCA, uh, Adirondack North Country Association, does uh, smaller grants for the same sort of things. Those things are from Betsy, and that's all she had for me. I have nothing myself for a roundtable. So I guess we should adjourn. Well, I'll leave that to Don. Well, I was going to say we should announce when the next meeting is before we... Well, let's do that. The next meeting is Monday the 1st, uh, 7 p.m., November 1st, here. And that will be the... Uh, uh, where the budget public hearing will open at 7.15. Meeting at 7, the public hearing involving the budget at 7.15. I will move to adjourn. Says note. Don. I yeah. will second. Second. I believe that's all we need. All in favor and good night. Um. Thank you, folks. <laughs> now, I'm just saying. That clock's a little fast. I, I'm watching it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I looked at my agenda. It was a I said, you know. And I will say that. How's 7.35 strike you? Oh, no. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she says, yeah, right. And that, that was what, what I held up. Sorry, you know, I locked that up. Well, no, no, no. When, when, no, when we started to get a little deep info. in the salt weeds, I this said, this is my rotation. Not my fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's you why I laughed. That, that will be in my minutes. <laughs> Mr. McGovern, did you bring enough for everyone? I heard it all. I specifically did not do before the meeting tonight because I knew I would call early. Bye, Vaughn. Bye, Vaughn. Bye, Vaughn. Well, why don't you put that gum on your nose? And did you bring enough for everyone? For what?